All right, so to go ahead and just, and just pull back out, we have um, we have our two boxes there. I'm gonna actually change the sun because I'm tired of looking at it there and bring it over this side. Uh, bring it pretty low. I wanna have long shadows. Those always you know, work fairly well. So here we can see our, our sun is actually pointing back this way, so the shadows are gonna be behind the objects. Uh, I, can, I can actually move the sun on this side if it just helps me understand where that's coming from. Um, and, and I, I want to show these objects and I want to talk about the space in between uh, these two objects. You know, maybe, maybe they're buildings, maybe they're just things. Um, and one thing that, that's important to note is that you know, v uh, using V-Ray is, is to convey kind of the experience. Uh, what is it like to be in that space? You know, plans and sections talk about that as well. Um, details even talk about that. But, but really renderings are kind of usually those selling images of what it's like and, and users very quickly understand what it's like to be in that space. Um, so here we can come into viewport options and we can control you know, what we're actually seeing. Uh, the lens length right now is a 50 millimeter lens um, but we can, we can drop that back. Um, you'll see a lot of architecture magazines actually have kind of these longer extended uh, views so that's 32 millimeter, and you can watch here in the perspective view. If I drop this down all the way to 18, the thing really starts to kind of grow in length, and and it's not true. It's not an accurate depiction of of what these objects are, but you start to see more of the faces, and the, the, there's some interesting angles. Uh, and this is all personal preference. So if if you like it, you know, at 50 millimeter, like it was, great, you know, go go for it. You can play around with this and see, you know, how can I frame this. How can I make it, uh, you know, really reveal the most about the space in between here? Um, materials, you know, we've got the wood on there. I've turned the bump map off. Maybe I can import a new material. Um, maybe I can just go and say, oh, you know, I'll just use a, a white porcelain material, which looks something like this. Uh, and instead of orange, I'm going to make that porcelain. Uh, and then I come back into options. Um, I can do a quick test render say okay yeah you know I'm really starting to see this space but hey wait a minute you know here on this, this image I see left and right and here in my render it's all cropped it's definitely not what I want I want I want this is the composition of the scene so what I need to do is go ahead and, and look at the output right now my output here is 320 by 240 which you can see here uh, if I want to increase that and say you know I want to see this bigger I can click 860 or 800 by 600 but I can also tell it to get the aspect ratio of this. This varies screen by screen, you know, as your monitor changes and your toolbars change, uh, the length to width changes. So if we get this aspect ratio, you can see it's updated, and I can tell it to lock. So no, no matter what size I do my rendering, it's going to be this constant aspect ratio. So mine's actually 800 by 407. If I render again, you can see, I mean, it's it's much it's it's exactly what that ratio was. So I, I'm able to see that composition come to life and say, okay, well, I have this negative space that surrounds it. You can also see I kind of have a a background of the sky, a gradient back there, um, that that starts to you know really show me much more accurately what this space is like. Um, if I told it to get even larger, we're we're, we're talking about you know considerable image. Right now I'm rendering and it's at 50%. Uh, let's see if we can find this little guy here. So it's, you know, having to think a lot more. You can see the little buckets going around and, and figuring things out and rendering it out. Um, but it's going to take a while. Uh, I could keep going. I can make this 20,000. I can make this 2 million. Um, and the thing to think about is, is how good of a rendering and how large do you actually need it? Uh, 2048 is, 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 is big. It's not huge. Um, but the thing to remember is that the the printers that we have in the lab uh, print about 150 pixels per inch. So if I wanted a 24 inch image, say, I only need to render about 3,600 pixels wide for that to be as good as the printer can print. It, it doesn't make sense to you know make 8,000 pixels wide image, scale it down, and then print it out. You're not going to see that resolution, and so. You'll spend hours and hours and hours and hours computing for not really any gain. Now, if this was going to be an HD video, I know I could go 1080 by 720 or 1080p. Uh, maybe I know that I want to save this for posterity as a high-resolution TIFF. For whatever reason, it's going to be a digital file only. Uh, I'd look at it.